Everything you're about to see and hear is true. Real cops, real cases compiled from actual events. Police stories told by the cops who lived them and will remember them the rest of their lives. In dangerous situations, you have to do something. It doesn't make you brave, it's just a commitment that you have to yourself. 1973, I was a robbery squad detective working out of the 13th Precinct in Manhattan. On May 10th of that year, I came home after working day duty, and usually my wife had dinner ready, but that night she wasn't feeling well. The doctor had given her a prescription. We knew our regular pharmacist was closed, so we drove up Central Avenue looking for another pharmacy that would be open. We found a place open in a quiet part of town, the kind of neighborhood where people feel safe at night. We don't expect anything out of the ordinary to happen. <coughs> Did you remember the prescription? Of course, it's in my purse. This place isn't very big. I hope they've got it. No, I'm sure oh, they will. The doc said you could get this stuff no. anywhere. Okay, <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, God, now this is unbelievable. Oh, come on, now just hang on. These guys let me fix something new. How are you folks this evening? Well, he's fine. <laughs> I could use some help. Abe, Mrs. Alvarez needs a refill for the baby right away. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm a little backed up this evening. Okay. Could you give me about an hour? Well, we could send it to us. Sure, no problem. We'll see you then. Okay. Bye-bye. Do you like some dinner? I suppose I should eat something. Chinese. Oh, that place we like is right around the corner. Sure, a little hot and sour soup. That'll get the bug right out of you. <laughs> we drove to a nearby Chinese restaurant for dinner and came back at about an hour, an hour and a half later. I remember looking at my watch and it was 9, 10 p.m., 20 minutes before closing. feeling any better? A little. Dinner helped. All right, we're gonna get you home, give you this medicine. Mm -hmm. Then I'm gonna give you a foot rub. Mm -hmm. You'll be fine by the morning. <laughs> oh, I guess you should get some Kleenex while I'm here. I used up every box in the house. Hello, we're back. Hello? I didn't know if that voice meant come back later or come back here, but I knew something was wrong and I knew it was probably a robbery. No. No. How'd he get out of the store? What? what? Just go as quick and as quiet as you can. Your prescription's ready, sir. Go now. I had to do something. It doesn't make you brave. Believe me, it doesn't. It's a commitment you have to yourself and to the people. It's a commitment you have when you become a cop. Here I saw two decent people up against the wall, put there by at least one person. He was probably armed, and I had to help. Come on back here. What did you say, hello? I had to play deaf, even stupid, anything to buy myself some time. What did you say? I said, come back here. I thought to myself, what am I going up against? Is he white? Is he black? Shotgun, handgun, what? Did you say something? I kept trying to play stupid because I thought the closer I could get, the more I could assess the situation and find out what I was up against. Hello? It was so weird. One minute you're out with your wife, and the next, bam, you're involved in the middle of a situation. Sorry, did you say something? What are you, an idiot? Get back here. Are you talking to me? Just screw it up! That was a Webley, a 445 caliber used in World War II. Very dangerous gun with a bullet one size larger than a 45 caliber. 
It had a six-inch barrel and was designed to knock you on your butt. But at that point, all I saw was a big, big gun. I stuck my hand into the hammer mechanism to keep it from firing. It was one of the first things I was taught in a special course on police tactics I had just taken. Well, the problem was the firing pin of that gun was like a needle because it has to go so far into the barrel to enable it to fire. He kept pulling the trigger and the pin was cutting me pretty bad. I'd been involved in a few shootings before, but never that close. I was, I was practically touching him. I'd never killed a man before, but the lives of these two people, my wife and myself, hung in the balance. I really had no choice. The New York City Police Department uses a 58-grain bullet. They don't want them to go through people's bodies and into innocent bystanders. It's not a strong round of ammunition, so it doesn't throw them back. I was fascinated and horrified looking at him. He was going down, but he was trying to use the weapon, so I kept using mine. thing took maybe eight seconds. I had no time to think. I only had time for the instincts to take over. I couldn't tell if I was shot because there was so much blood all over me. No! There's another one! My back was to the door. I never would have seen him if it wasn't for Erner. I was petrified. I knew I had no ammunition left because I fired at least six times. After the second one went down, I went completely blank for 10 or 15 seconds. I just can't account for that period. I guess I felt safe. The next thing I remember is... Mel? Are you shot? Mel? Did they kill you? Mel? No, just my What I didn't know was that while Erna was outside, she dialed 911 and called in at 1013. That's an officer needs assistance. In a minute, maybe less, the local police were there. Drop the gun! No, Jerry, he's a cop! I'm on the job! I said drop the gun! I'm on the job, Dad! I think he's a policeman! Let's see some ID. Call an ambulance. I had been on the force at that time for 18 years when that happened, and I had been in a couple of shootings before but nothing that personal and certainly nothing that frightening. I never would have seen that second robber if Erna hadn't been there. I may have saved the Deucen bombs, but she sure as hell saved me. That night, I learned a lesson I've carried with me ever since. That lesson is that cops aren't like everybody else. You may think you are, and you may go on day by day just doing normal things, but when trouble happens, another part takes over. It's not just the courage, it's not just the training, it's that commitment you made when you became a policeman. Well, re Pharmacy had a long list of prior arrests for violent crimes, including shooting a cop and robbing the same store two months earlier. The second robber, having no previous criminal record, made the fatal mistake of trying to rescue his accomplice rather than surrender. Detective Waxman received an award from the pharmacy chain and the Medal of Valor from the city of New York. He and Verna also received awards from the New York, New Jersey Detectives Crime Clinic. Mel Waxman retired from the NYPD and lives in Florida, where he conducts investigations for the Department of Professional Regulations. Several months after the incident, pharmacist Abraham Dusenbaum was shot and killed during another attempted robbery. Escaped.